Hey everyone, welcome back to Simming History, where we look at the history of architecture through the lens of the Sims. This week we are building the Elms, a Maison de Plaisance in Newport, Rhode Island from the Gilded Era. First, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit like and subscribe, it helps out the channel. Everyone knows F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, right? Either you had to read it in school, or you've seen one of the many film adaptations, or, like me, both. I've never really been a fan of The Great Gatsby, but that's kind of irrelevant for today, because Newport, Rhode Island, home of the Elms, and Newport's Maison de Plaisances, served as the inspiration for the setting of The Great Gatsby. Specifically, the house Rose Cliff served as the inspiration for Gatsby's home. Now, the Elms is not Rose Cliff, but it has a particular tour that makes it very unique. When you visit the Elms, you can take a special side tour called Servant's Life, where you tour above and below the main house to see how the servants lived and worked. For us, that means we can actually build the entire home, the complete picture, in Sims. So let's get to it. Maison de Plaisance is French for country house. It comes from 18th century France when the rich and elite aristocrats would have had a country home to spend the weekends or summers at. This Maison de Plaisance in Newport, Rhode Island was built in 1901 for Edward Julius Berwind, a sort of self-created man from Philadelphia. He was a Navy vet and of course a tycoon, in this case coal. And like all the other tycoons of the Gilded Era, he wanted to build himself a summer home in Newport. To that end, he hired Horace Trumbauer, a 31-year-old Philly native. He was the only architect to design a home for Newport that had not studied abroad. He had not studied in Paris. He had not even left the country. He had even only been in self-practice for just seven years, but yet, he got the contract to design the Elms. Now, the Elms was based off of the Chateau de Anziers in France. It, the interiors were decorated by a French firm, Jules Allard and Sons. And it was designed in the Beaux-Arts style, which takes its form and, and rules from classical architecture in the Renaissance. Beaux-Arts originated from the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. It emphasizes the use of stone and classical forms and features. Decorative elements were highly detailed, and there was a hierarchy in spaces. We saw this a lot in classical architecture, where the first, second, and third floors would have had different orders, usually columns. In this case at the Elms, the orders are expressed through the windows. The first floor windows were arched and had very much the traditional Beaux-Arts shape. The second story windows were rectangular. The front gallery has a double white Italian marble stair with wrought iron handrails. The walls are limestone with raised panels. They have a white marble floor and purple marble ionic columns. Those are the columns with the scrolls with bronze capitals. Of course, Sims doesn't really have ionic columns, so we make do. There are double alcoves on either side of the entrance and they were used by the family to display their many collections and display cases. These collections would have included items like jade and figurines from around the world. On the walls of the gallery, such as on either side of the ballroom door directly across from the entrance, there are paintings. In that case, two 18th century classical paintings which were purchased by Mr. Berwind in Venice. Also in the hallway, there are busts and tapestries.
Down on one end of the hallway is the library, where Mr. Berwind would have worked or met with business associates. The walls were walnut wainscoting and red damask. The center table, the marble mantel, and the bookcases were all designed by Allard and Sons. And the fireplace contains a bas-relief copy of the Madonna and Child from the Church of San Jacopo di Ripoli in Florence, Italy. Next, let's take a look at the conservatory or the palm room. This was inspired by the Orangeries of France, which were sort of really nice conservatories that the aristocrats could hang out in, in which the orange trees could be brought in during the winter to help protect them from the elements. This room was designed to draw in the outside. Every wall contains either windows looking out onto the gardens or mirrors to reflect those gardens. It also has a fountain and plant basins that were decorated with sea deities. Next to the conservatory was the drawing room, where the family and their guests would have gathered prior to dinner. This room was done in a Louis XVI style, so think very fancy Rococo French Marie Antoinette. It was designed to have monochromatic gray walls, but with intricate detailing and woodwork and molded plaster. The point of focus in this room was not really supposed to be the walls, it was supposed to be the ceiling which has a very large 18th century painting attached to it. The fact that that painting is literally attached to the ceiling is why it is still there. When this home came up for auction in the 1930s, that painting could not be separated from the house. Next up is the ballroom, which is apparently done up in Louis XV style. Louis XV style is not my repertoire, so I'm just going to believe what I read here. Its design hallmark are the moldings that continue from the wall up onto the ceiling, and in the center of that ceiling is a very large crystal chandelier. The windows open out directly onto a back walk, which will be built later. The dining room, which was designed entirely around the paintings purchased by Mr. Berwind in Venice, 
with paintings between and above the doors. The fireplace has three different kinds of stone, red, white onyx, and green marble. The ceiling in the dining room looks like it's wood coffer, but actually it is molded plaster with painted graining to look like oak. The room is lit with a combination of the wall sconces we've seen everywhere else, but also four custom-made chandeliers. The final family space we're going to talk about on this video is the breakfast room. This room was designed to accommodate several Chinese lacquered wood panels that have been acquired by the family. Collecting oriental art was a thing in the Gilded Era, for lack of a better phrase. In this case, they wanted to design a room that would show off one of their collections. And so, between every set of doors and above every set of doors is a Chinese lacquered panel. Except for one. One of the panels is actually a recreation. It's not historic. It was made to look like the rest and if you look closely when you're there you can in fact tell which one it is but i'm going to let you look for that which leads us into the service areas Next to the breakfast room, connecting to both the breakfast room and the dining room, is the butler's pantry. This is where, or rather, from which food would be served during meals. It's two stories. It's where a lot of the silver would have also been kept. A lot of the dishes would have been kept. It has two sinks, a fridge to store the cold courses, and a dumbwaiter connecting to the kitchen below. In this little back corner of the house, there is a room that's currently being used as a restroom, but at the time the building's construction was originally the coat room for guests and is immediately adjacent to the house's elevator. This elevator connected all the floors from the basement all the way up to the hidden third floor. And in the far back corner would have been the servant's stair. This stair also served all the floors and would have been used solely by the servants because of course they would not have been permitted to be on the main stair unless they were cleaning it. Thanks for joining me this week for part one of this build. I'll be back next week with part two. This build was just too much for one video. Let me know in the comments section down below if you have any questions or if you could see yourself maybe living or visiting the elms or let me know if you have visited Newport and have toured some of these houses. In which case, which one was your favorite? You can find me on The Sims 4 Gallery, where there will be, eventually, a playable version of this build, once I get it done. It, seriously, it's a big build. It's taking a long time. You can also find me on Instagram at Simming History, where I post teasers for videos when I remember to do so, which is not frequently. I'll see you guys next week for part two. Bye!